Ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Can we please give a huge round of applause for the one and only Neil Cole Hardcore? Yes. Sydney, how you doing tonight? Are you good? Oh, yes. Man, it's so good to be here. I'm currently trying to buy a new car at the moment. I love the way cars are marketed to men. Especially work vehicles. Because they're marketed like they're some kind of UFC athlete. Have you seen these ads? They're like, this truck has 200 ton towing capacity. Will dominate any natural environment with its turbo diesel 60 litre exhaust cock. A big bloke like you needs the new Isuzu D-Max. <laughs> you can go your own way. <laughs> and that works, you know, it taps into my male brain like psychological Viagra. I'm like, yeah, that's a man's car. I want to be inside of it. <laughs> I think they should advertise everything like that to men. Like, what don't men do enough of? Go to therapy. Advertise it like those car ads. Imagine that ad. Do you want to get all the hot girls wet with your emotional intelligence? <laughs> do you want to smash that anxious attachment to secure? Do you want steroids, but like for your soul? <laughs> well, a big bloke like you needs therapy. You can mindfully meditate. <laughs> uh, let's get to know you guys a little bit. Do you guys like cats or dogs? What do you like? Okay. Overwhelmingly dogs. Whoa, all right. Big cat fan over here. What do you like about cats, madam? They're so cute. You don't think dogs are cute? Dogs are all right. <laughs> They're all right. Okay, do you have a cat? Or? Yes. Okay, nice. And are you guys a couple here? Or? Yes. Beautiful. And are you third wheeling here? Or <laughs> just... Oh, something like that. Fuck, you're sexy, man. Like, where's this guy? He's jacked. What's your heritage? You, uh, like your, okay, Chinese. Classic, nice. <laughs> What do, you, what do you do for work, bro? I'm a sales rep. Sales rep. <laughs> what do you sell, drugs? Come on, like, be more, be more specific here, brother. What do you sell? Anything from China. Anything from China. <laughs> That's like 99% of products, that doesn't help. Uh, nice to meet you, bro. What's your name? Johnny. Johnny, give Johnny a round of applause here. <laughs> Man. I actually think house cats are the true apex predator of the natural environment. Yeah. It's not the crocodile, it's not the great white shark, it's not even the human being, it is the house cat. Yep. <laughs> Did you know house cats change the sound of their meow to make it sound more like a human baby? Tell me that isn't the most toxic and manipulative thing you've ever heard in your life, okay? House cats are all furry little psychopaths. I got my house cat, she never had a problem using the litter tray. Always used it. And then the first time a girl stayed the night, she shat on her clothes. <laughs> yeah, house cats are the amber herd of the animal kingdom. <laughs> Just gaslighting you with that nice meow, you know? Meow. Meow. Oh, who ripped up my couch? Meow. <laughs> And then they got that angry meow, you know that one? The wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is my job, guys. Okay. Wow. <laughs> 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 I practice this in the mirror for 20 minutes. All right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> my cat gives you two warning meows, then she becomes an ice addict. Yeah, you try to clip her nails, she's like, wow, wow, wow. 
Just Bondi to Campbelltown real quick. <laughs> I do like dogs. I just think some dog owners are way too comfortable with what their dog does to strangers in public. Yeah, you ever been sitting at the park? Some dog just starts humping your leg and licking your face. The owner's like, oh, I guess he likes you. <laughs> and you're like, oh, he's also molesting me, okay? <laughs> Some people like really violent dogs. I got a mate, he's got a pit bull and a rottweiler. And these people, they're like the conspiracy theorists of dog owners, aren't they? Because they're always like, oh, it's the media. It's the media, bro. They're actually really nice, it's all the media. Meanwhile, there's barbed wire around their entire house. <laughs> the dog's next to them, just fucking... <laughs> looking like it's about to commit a massacre. The only thing lower than a pit bull owner's IQ is the chance of their child making it past age four. <laughs> All right, for a dog joke, that was pretty rough. I've got a darker one, do you want to hear it? Yes! Yeah. All right. What does a progressive woman with a house cat and a toxic man with a pit bull have in common? A body count of two babies. <laughs> hey, you said you wanted it, okay. Look, you might be thinking, Neil, it's a bit early in the night for an abortion joke. <laughs> But don't worry, it's so early, it's not a real joke, it's just a clump of words. <laughs> These jokes are like me, okay? They're dark and intelligent. But they're also short and disappointing to women. <laughs> I'm sure you guys know this show is called Villain Era. And if you don't know what a villain era is, it's a term used on social media to describe a period of someone's life where they just kind of live for themselves and they don't really care what other people think. And I do want to go through a villain era, but I just think it's very different when a man goes through a villain era, you know? Like when a woman goes through a villain era, men get ghosted. When a man goes through a villain era, women start disappearing. <laughs> They've made documentaries about men who went through their villain era. <laughs> but hey, at this point in my career, I don't really care whether it's comedy or true crime. I just want to be on Netflix, okay? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm in my late 20s now, so everyone's getting married. Who's married here? Round of applause if you're married. Okay. Lovely. Right, you clapped and then, is this your wife or? Oh, okay. <laughs> is, this your, is this your husband? Oh, awesome, man. How long you guys been married? A year and a half now. year and a half? Beautiful. Love. Are you brown? Yeah. I got this. <laughs> Such a forward question, man. I could, there's a lot of lights here. Okay, so we got like an interracial gay couple over here. This is nice. How do your parents feel about, like, this whole thing? <laughs> Disowned? Oh, man. Oh, I know, right? Oh. They're shit cunts anyway, so... He goes, they're shit cunts anyway, so... so are, your, are your parents very religious, are they? And, oh, okay, and are you Indian, or...? Uh, Afghan. Afghan? Yeah, fuck, you can't be gay there, bro. That's <laughs> you know, like, thrown off buildings and shit, man. Like, you can't... <laughs> and is he, you know, is he a good partner? He's alright, he's alright. He's alright? Okay. Is he the bomb? <laughs> Because we just assume white parents are okay, but are your, are your parents religious as well? Or str were they okay with this? <laughs> They're white enough. They're white enough. They're white enough. Okay. <laughs> what is that like? What's your? Are you just like convict white, or what kind of? <laughs> Masso. Oh, okay. Are they orthodox? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is forbidden love right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love this. You know what? Give these guys a round of applause. That's nice. Uh, like I said, I'm 29, right? So everyone's getting married, getting these invitations all the time, you know, save the date. You are invited to Sarah's big, beautiful wedding featuring James. <laughs> Please join us and celebrate our love in beautiful Vietnam. <laughs> You're like, Vietnam? Right, just do it in Liverpool. It's the same thing. <laughs> Yeah. Seriously, I hate these overseas weddings, man. Like, if I have to spend more than three grand and get malaria shots for your dumb wedding, I want a divorce money back guarantee. Thank you very much. <laughs> and a couple of my mates have been showing me the rings they're gonna use to propose to their girlfriends. And it got me thinking, I don't, I don't reckon diamond rings are inherently beautiful. I think we perceive them as beautiful because they're rare and expensive. So the way things are going in a couple of years, I reckon men are gonna start proposing to their girlfriends with canisters of petrol. <laughs> They'll be like, babe, you mean everything to me. Here's 50 liters of unleaded. <laughs> Worth 30 grand in 2035. I, uh, I really respect people in this day and age who wait till marriage to lose their virginity. Hmm. I mean, not the ugly ones. <laughs> you know, when someone ugly is like, oh, I'm choosing to wait till marriage, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just choosing not to bang Dua Lipa. Like, I'm... <laughs> I'm sure we're both tempted at the same level. I read this statistic. It said that couples who wait till marriage often have a more fulfilling love life in the long run, which does make sense when you think about it, right? Because if you only ever try vanilla ice cream your whole life, you'll always be satisfied with vanilla. <laughs> yeah, not like most of us, you know, we try vanilla, we're like, oh, it's pretty good. And we try chocolate, well, oh, chocolate, that's... <laughs> strawberry, wow, strawberry, let's go. Double chocolate, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Double chocolate and strawberry at the same time? Ah, that's <laughs> probably what's going on there, you know? <laughs> but then you go back to vanilla and it doesn't satisfy you, you know? So you gotta add all these M&Ms. You gotta stick a wafer into it. You gotta watch someone else eating chocolate on icecreamhub.com. <laughs> I'm very interested in the way animals mate with each other. <laughs> no, I'm not turned on by it. All right, I'm... I watch documentaries. I only jack off sometimes. Jeez. <laughs> like insects, you know, they're very matriarchal. Uh, insects usually have a queen. Bees, they have a queen bee. And she's this giant fat thing that just eats and pops out babies. And all the male workers, it's their job to feed her and protect her. And she just keeps eating and popping out babies. She's like the ultimate welfare bogan, isn't she? Just... <laughs> Oi, Tyson, get me some nuggets. I'm having another one. <laughs> I watched the show Married at First Sight with my girlfriend. And if you don't know the show Married at First Sight, uh, basically they get a bunch of strangers, they marry them off in front of their friends and family. And in Australia, this is a TV show. <laughs> For us Indians, it's normal. <laughs> and they always have the same people on Married at First Sight. You know, it's always makeup influencers and personal trainers. It's all very middle and upper class. You know what I want to see? I want to see Married at First Sight, How's Those Edition? That's what I want to see, okay? 19-year-old <laughs> Shanae, already pregnant, cigarette in hand, just being like, yeah, as soon as I saw that mullet walking down the aisle, I knew Jada was my next baby daddy. Fuck yeah. <laughs> And if you don't watch the show, basically they get these couples, they put them in a big apartment building, they don't work, they drink all the time, they constantly fight, they constantly cheat on each other, 
and every couple of weeks a panel of experts decides whether they get evicted. <laughs> They're already in a housing commission. <laughs> And the women on the show, they love a man who's vulnerable. That's a very common thing among millennial women, isn't it? They love a vulnerable man. Oh, as soon as Nathan started crying about his chihuahua. It just, it just felt so close to him. I think that's good, men learning to be vulnerable, talking about our feelings. But I also think it's a luxury if you live in a safe environment. Like a man being vulnerable here in the inner west, just creates the space for emotional intimacy. Whereas a man being vulnerable in Mount Druid <laughs> just creates the space for him to get gang bashed. <laughs> I think we gotta keep some men toxic. Just a few. Cause you know, they'll defend us in a war. <laughs> just a few. You know how Sparta had 300 warriors that took down the Persian army? I think we need an Aussie 300. <laughs> yeah, 300 of the most toxic men possible. Just 300 Eshes. <laughs> Instead of the SAS, the Eshes. <laughs> if China gets a bit aggressive in the South China Sea, send the Eshes. <laughs> Braden there with his bum bag, like, Oi, Solomon Islands, it's my postcode, you fucking dog. Oi. <laughs> I, think, I think we're so focused on gender equality, we forget that men and women are still different. Like, I think there are certain places we can never have full equality. like a happy endings massage parlor. <laughs> I just can't imagine the demand from women, you know? I just can't imagine a woman, 2 a.m. in the morning, walking down a seedy alleyway, heels in hand, being like, yeah, how much for a rub and tug, eh? <laughs> I think if there was a happy endings massage parlor for women, it would be somewhere they can go after a dramatic night out to have their feelings validated. Like they'll be there in a dark room being like, yes, I did hook up with Claire's boyfriend, but she was being such a bitch to me and I was really stressed from work. And there'll be an Asian guy next to her just like, you're so pretty, so perfect. <laughs> did nothing wrong. Claire, fat cow. <laughs> Now look, some, some people think that joke is a bit problematic, so let's do a joke about a nice topic. ISIS. I was reading about ISIS the other day, um, not because I'm interested. I, I do look the part, but no. I, I was reading about ISIS. They did this study into ISIS and they found out the ISIS recruitment team used three strategies to get young boys radicalized into ISIS. They emphasized that they would get a free house in the caliphate. They emphasized that they would get a lot of camaraderie with fellow fighters and that they could potentially find a spouse. So I had a couple of thoughts when I read this. My first thought was, wow, ISIS has a recruitment team. <laughs> Imagine seeing that on seek.com. ISIS looking for an individual with explosive passion. <laughs> Short-term contract. <laughs> and then the next thought was like, oh, a free house. Well, you know, I'm a millennial from Sydney. How good is the house, okay? Because if we're talking four bedroom waterfront property, yeah, I'll behead some infidels for that, okay? <laughs> And then I thought about the next two things, you know, potentially finding camaraderie and getting a spouse. And it got me thinking, what would an ad for ISIS look like? You know, you're scrolling through social media one day, brown guy with a beard pops up. They're good with diversity. <laughs> and he's like, uh, 
A lot of people think ISIS is all about the murder and the killing. But it's more than that. It's about the friends you make along the way. And who knows? You might find that special someone. ISIS. You can go your own way! Uh, join today, get 50% of your second wife. <laughs> Is anyone religious here? Any religious people? Yo, what is the back? Oh. <laughs> All right. This is gonna be fun. Okay. <laughs> what's, uh, what's your religion? <laughs> We're from the gate. You're from the what? The gate? Yes, Kathmi's gate, why was the water? What? <laughs> Do I, I don't, does anyone know what that is? I don't know. That's okay. Yeah, are you in are you in that Blue Mountains cult? Is that <laughs> What's the gate? No, I wanna know. What what tell me about the gate? It's the gate between Lebanon and occupied Palestine. Okay, well <laughs> it's gonna be hard to make that funny. Alright, so let's <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, no bombs tonight, okay? Just... <laughs> Occupied Lebanon and... Okay, fuck. All right. Yeah. Fuck, I thought yours was bad, but fuck me, like, this is... This is... <laughs> so, are you, are you Muslim? Yeah. Okay, nice. And who else is Muslim here? Any Muslims? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cuz fuck it. What uh like which which country specifically is your is your heritage? Afghanistan. Uh, wow, there's a lot of Afghans here tonight, man. This is nice. Okay. And how long you been in Australia for? Four years. Oh, okay. Nice, man. And how religious are you? Like, are you, are you drinking tonight? No. Okay, nice. Keeping it halal. I like it. <laughs> Do you drink alcohol at all? Uh, not anymore. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you do, bro. I feel like... <laughs> and are you, whereabouts is Sydney from? Uh, Ermington, okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. Do we have any, any Christians here tonight? Any? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> nice. You're Christian, so are you Catholic, Orthodox? What are you? Catholic. Catholic, lovely. Is she Catholic as well? Are you Catholic? Are you, did you just... <laughs> <laughs> he goes, are you Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> are you guys married? Engaged, lovely. I'll oh, give them a round of applause. That's very nice. Nice. And what's your what country of heritage you from? Lebanon. Lebanon. Lebanese Catholic. Nice. Okay. So do you know about the gate? <laughs> I've never. You found out about it as well. Well, if even a Lebanese person's like, what the fuck is this place, man? Like. All right. Well, we'll we're all learning tonight. That's good. I think Australia needs its own religion. Yeah. Yeah, because I was reading about Jesus the other day and I found out Jesus, he appealed to the most rural and downtrodden people of his time. Which got me thinking, if there was ever a Jesus figure to emerge in Australia, it would be like Jesus from Dubbo. And <laughs> he passes out on the first night of Bathurst and everyone thinks he's gone. Then four nights later, oh, he's up, let's go Jesus! <laughs> He's a piss pot through and through. <laughs> he starts a religion called Boganism. <laughs> to get baptised into the church of Boganism, you're dunked into a bath of goon. <laughs> Instead of getting circumcised, you get given a mullet. <laughs> you gotta pray five times a day facing the MCG. 
And Jezza, he goes across the world, spreading the religion of Boganism, building churches, but the churches are just Bunnings. <laughs> and everyone across the world, they're like, hey, we already have religion. We already have spiritual fulfillment. And Jezza's like, mate, whatever spiritual fulfillment you get, we'll beat it by 10%. <laughs> He turns rain into beer, <laughs> rocks into party pies. Man, how good are party pies? <laughs> so good, yeah. It's such clever marketing, isn't it? Because it's, it's just a small pie. <laughs> and they're like, ooh, it's a party. Ooh. <laughs> Does that mean I have a party dick? <laughs> Oh yeah, you clap that one, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, when, I, when I was single, girls always said this about my dick. <laughs> and when I say girls, women, I just wanna... Just wanna clap that. <laughs> Are you booing that? Like, <laughs> oh, it's not a pedophile, boo. <laughs> God damn. No, when I was single, uh, women would always be like, oh, it's, it's bigger than I thought. <laughs> it's bigger than I expected. They never actually said it was big. <laughs> so it's, it's not bad. I know, what that, I know what that means. You just assumed I had a little micro curry penis. <laughs> and then to your surprise, oh, look at that, it's average. That's nice. My dick is like the Jamaican bobsled team. You don't expect much, but it slightly exceeds those expectations. And they made a movie about it, featuring five black guys. <laughs> I don't think I could ever be a sperm donor, you know? Like I could donate the sperm, it would just never get chosen. <laughs> Women will be looking through the, the book of sperm. I, you know, I don't know how it works. And then they'll be, they'll be like, oh, look at this. Six foot four French doctor. That's good sperm. Very good, very good. Six foot three Brazilian engineer. Lovely sperm there. That's nice. Five foot seven Indian, no tertiary education. Yuck. <laughs> Who put chicken nuggets in the seafood buffet? <laughs> I don't want this affirmative action sperm. <laughs> I think one day women will make up the majority of government. And, and you know how China has a social credit score? I think they'll introduce a small dick score for men. <laughs> and like based on how many icks you give off determines your small dick score. So if I give off a little ick, if I'm talking to my girlfriend and I'm like, pop on her nose or something. <laughs> My small dick score slightly increases. <laughs> Whereas if I give off a big ick, if I'm at the bar and someone overhears me being like, well, technically it is murdering a baby. <laughs> then five red flags pop up on my phone. I'm legally declared to have small dick status. I have to go around to all my neighbors and be like, um, by law, I have to tell you I'm on the small dick registry and um, that means I'm also a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. so. And there'll be this entire underclass of small dick men with no rights. And one day the female president will feel bad, give the rights back to the small dick men. But then one of the men will be like, oh, where's my hug? And she'll be like, no, I've changed my mind. Just, <laughs> Who else we got here tonight? Any, any incels here tonight? <laughs> Did someone woo that? God damn. Any? No, you don't admit. If you don't know what an incel is, uh, it stands for involuntarily celibate. So it's, it's usually men, men who want to get laid, but they can't get laid. And I feel like being an incel is a lot like being Gen Z trying to get into the workforce. <laughs> You know, everyone's looking for experience, but you don't have any experience, so you can't get any experience. And if you went to a boys' private school, 
you can force your way into your first job. <laughs> Daddy pays off the employer. It's <laughs> actually a very progressive joke, okay, guys? That's <laughs> I think if you want to get young men interested in like progressive ideas, you got to make it rebellious for them. It's like young men, they just rebel against whatever they're told. Like if you want them interested in things like feminism or women's rights, just have a class where they're being taught the benefits of traditional gender roles. Then there'll be some cool kid up the back rebelling, just being like, Teacher's like, um, do you have something to say, Nathan? <laughs> Nathan, coolest kid in school, puts down his cherry vape. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I do, sir. <laughs> the future is female. <laughs> All the kids around him are like, oh my God, that's so cool, Nathan. I wish I was that brave, fuck. <laughs> Teacher's like, ah, uh, say sorry right now, Nathan. Nathan's like, oh, sorry, sir. Sorry that I fucked your mum. <laughs> Consensually. <laughs> Teacher's like, get outside right now, Nathan. Nathan's like, no. All the kids are like, no means no. No means no. <laughs> he goes outside, graffiti's a clitoris on the teacher's car. <laughs> but he's a maths teacher, so he can't find it. What about this? Any fuckboys here? <laughs> hey, you're pointing at it. I reckon you're a fuckboy. 100%. Look at, Look at those guns, bro. Louis, can you guys see him? Look at him. Fucking. He's jacked. Are you single right now? Yeah. Okay. Are you on the apps or anything? Maybe. Yeah, uh, Kevin Newen right here. But that's it, man. I think a fuckboy should run our foreign policy. Because instead of bombing other countries, he'll love bomb them. <laughs> he'll be on the phone to India like, hey, India. I was just thinking about how beautiful you are. India's like, oh my God, really? You were thinking about me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, how do you feel about getting into an exclusive tri deal? Ooh, I, would, I would absolutely love to get into an exclusive trade deal with you. Yes, please. All right, sweet. Will you send us your rice? We'll send you our natural gas. One week passes, India doesn't hear from Australia. Calls up like, uh, hey, Australia, um, how's it going? Uh, I've just been really busy with work, hi. <laughs> We're still in an exclusive trade deal, right? Oh, I'm actually trading with a lot of countries right now. <laughs> but how do you feel about an open three-way trade deal with, with Saudi Arabia? She's, she's really hot. No, 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 I want to be on an exclusive trade deal with you. I'm coming to the Pacific Ocean right now. Let's talk about it. Well, that's a major boundary of mine. Uh, you're gonna have to block you. Yeah. I wanted your gas, all I got was your gas lighting. <laughs> all those terms have become very popular, haven't they? You know, gas lighting, manipulation, narcissism. You notice how everything's narcissism now? Yeah. Literally everything. You've got food, someone's like, oh, Neil, can I have some food? You're like, no, I'm actually hungry, it's, it's my food. They're like, mm, that's actually a form of nutritional narcissism, okay? <laughs> You go on TikTok, it's like, 10 signs you're dealing with a nutritional narcissist. <laughs> Everyone has ADHD now as well. <laughs> yeah, you go on TikTok, it's like, 10 signs your partner has ADHD. Look, 10 signs your partner has ADHD could just be 10 signs you're boring. Like, yeah, maybe your partner has ADHD, or maybe your story sucks so much they get distracted by the light bulb, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Who's got mental illness? <laughs> fuck, your hand up went straight away. What do you, what do you have? Um, all of the above. All of the above. <laughs> What's the worst one? Ask him. Ask him, Jesus, all right. What is, are you, are you brown? Uh, no. <laughs> Persian, okay, and are you white? About as wide as you can get, yeah. About as wide as you can get. Yeah, that's like a Persian guy. He's like, I have a brother, I don't care that she's crazy. You know, I see it. <laughs> but what do you have? What's the worst one? Say. Um, probably my oppositional defiance disorder. Oppositional defiance disorder. Yeah. Isn't that just like being a cunt? Oppositional defiance. That's... <laughs> Try having oppositional defiance in Afghanistan. See what happens there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's terrible. Hope you, hope you go through. It's actually heaps of fun. So what is, I'm assuming from the name, it's just you're very defiant, right? Uh, to some degree, yeah. But sometimes it's more that you can't really control it. You just, you just go for it. And... You can't really control it. You just go for it. Yeah. So, <laughs> Whatever somebody like say they've requested you to do something in a um, you know a more kind of I know. I feel like there's a conversation you've got to have with a therapist actually. <laughs> now that I think about it, this is mad. but social media is definitely it's making us all mentally ill, isn't it? You know, because you like you like one video and then they just like bombard you with more extreme. They're just trying to radicalize you. Like you like one video that's slightly critical of leftist politics, you're bombarded with 50 videos of Alex Jones <laughs> telling you lesbian lizards run the world <laughs> just so they can harvest your data and make billions of dollars selling you manscaped razors that don't even work. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh Neil, just take a self-care day. Just, just take a self-care day. I'm like, what is a self-care day? It's just a day off. <laughs> Calling a day off a self-care day is like calling masturbation genital compassion, okay? <laughs> then you got all these angry old baby boomers on Facebook. You know these guys? Greg. <laughs> Arms crossed, speed dealer sonny's in his profile photo. <laughs> Educated at the school of hard knocks. <laughs> which just means dropped out in year nine. And they're always saying the same thing. They're always having to go at young men, these guys, you know? They're like, oh, young men today, they're fucking soft. They're all weak. They can't do a push-up. It's like, Greg, mate, you look like you need a push-up bra, okay? So how about... <laughs> what else do they say? They're always like, oh, you can't say anything anymore. Fucking free speech, it's dead. Can't bloody say anything. <laughs> and there's some truth to that, you know, there's these artists and academics who are being silenced. But I always wondered, what do these baby boomers on Facebook actually want to say? You ever ask one of them, like, all right, what do you, what do you want to say, Greg? Say it. It's never anything profound, is it? It's always like, oh, well, you can't say retard. Well, if, you know, you're intellectually disabled, you can, so you're fine. <laughs> what else do they say? They're always having to go at young people. They're like, oh, young people today, they're all woke. They're all depressed. Can bloody identify as bloody anything. <laughs> it's like, yeah, your generation raised my generation. It's like, maybe if you identified as a better father, your daughter wouldn't be a woke, depressed, furry dom, or whatever the fuck she is. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you can't make jokes anymore. Comedy's gone woke. It's all left wing. <laughs> Look, comedy is a very left-leaning industry. Uh, it's, it's so left-leaning that if you're straight and have a savings account, you're considered a fascist. <laughs> But I feel like we all know what Greg's kind of humour is. Every single one of Greg's jokes are the same. It's always like a swear word, a racial slur and a pun, that's it. 
every single one. He's like, oh mate, what do you call an Asian chocolate bar? <laughs> Fucking ching chock. <laughs> oh mate, went to 7-Eleven, the bloke tried to fight me. Talk about a fucking curry puncher. <laughs> the one generation I really respect are the parents of the baby boomers. The ones who fought in World War II because, you know, they truly changed their mind throughout the 20th century, didn't they? In the 1940s, they were brainwashed to hate the Japanese. Then 30 years later, they were like, you know what? Panasonic does make good TVs. <laughs> Let's mellow out a little bit, guys. What, what, what can I ask you? Do you guys do any drugs? Any? <laughs> yes. yeah. Ermo? For sure. 100. How come there's no drugs that make you more right wing? Every drug, it always makes you more left-wing. Everyone's like, oh, I got high this weekend. Open my mind, realise we're all the same. <laughs> no one's ever like, yeah, I got high this weekend, you know. Just diversified my stock portfolio. <laughs> no one's ever like, yeah, I got high this weekend. Open my mind, realise we've got to shut the border right now. <laughs> If I was Prime Minister, my, uh, my drug policy would be I'd make people who do too much cocaine do weed. And people who do too much weed do cocaine. <laughs> just think about it. People who do too much weed, they just need some energy. Just sitting there with their conspiracy theories. Just give them a line. They'll be like, ooh, the only conspiracy theory is that I don't have a job. Let's go. <laughs> Whereas people who do too much cocaine, they just need to chill out. All these investment bankers manipulating the currency, just give them a joint. They'll be like... Mm. Mm, the only currency we should be trading is love, man. <laughs> We are so divided now, you know? Left wing versus right wing. In, in real life, not just online. Like, after Mardi Gras this year, there were these um, LGBT activists that were protesting for their community. And then there were these religious ethnic guys that were protesting for religious freedom. And they kept protesting and counter-protesting each other. And the best thing about that would have been the bogans at home trying to pick a side. <laughs> They'll be sitting there watching a current affair like, oh, fuck me, Shazza. They're gay, but they're lebs. What do we do? <laughs> All right, this is where it gets really dark. All right, well, uh, look, the trans issue is very interesting to me, right? Because, because so many people who used to disagree on that suddenly agree on it now. Like J.K. Rowling and Ben Shapiro. They agree. That's insane. The woman who wrote Harry Potter and the guy who looks like he could get beaten up by Harry Potter. <laughs> in a weird way, it kind of unified them. And so I was like, well, if it unifies people, maybe that's how you solve Israel-Palestine. Drag queen story time in the West Bank. <laughs> RuPaul's Gaza striptease. <laughs> <laughs> Just have a drag queen twerking on a Palestinian, like, oh, you like Hamas? What about Hamas? <laughs> Netanyahu will finally agree to a two gender solution. <laughs> I like drag shows, you know, I'm, I'm jealous of drag queens and what they get to say. It's like I went to this drag show, the queen came out. Of the curtains. <laughs> and, and they were like, oh, look at all the sluts here tonight. 
and all the women were like, woo! <laughs> then they singled someone out in the audience. They're like, ooh, look at you with your big titties out, you big whore. <laughs> Practicing on that straw for lighter. Mm, I'm gonna give you a night you'll never forget. <laughs> I'm sorry, without the eye makeup, that is a hate crime. You take those words, you put them online, that is a school shooter's manifesto. <laughs> We're so obsessed with diversity now. You ever notice how every commercial tries really hard to sound super diverse? Even if it's a product that only white people buy? <laughs> I swear to God. Guys, I saw this ad the other day. It was like, Australia. Our diversity is our strength. We've got chopsticks and Chico rolls. Bindies and bikinis. Board shorts and burkas. So whether you're young, old, gay, straight, or just hashtag living your best life, we've got something for all Australians. The new VB 50 kilo keg of beer. <laughs> Only 49.99. It's got the VB logo on the pride flag. <laughs> you know, every time a new show comes out, there's always some article like, well, where's the diversity? There's no brown people on The Bachelor. Mm. It's like no one actually asks brown people. Maybe I don't want to be represented on that dumb show. How about that? <laughs> you really think there's some... Syrian refugee thinking to himself, like, oh, you know what will make my family proud is just... <laughs> dating 25 women in bikinis. <laughs> you couldn't have a Muslim bachelor anyway. It would last one episode. <laughs> He'd be like, yes, I want to make you all my wife. <laughs> We do, we do, all right, we have a lot of Middle Eastern people here. Any Indians here? Where are the Indians at? No. <laughs> nice, nice. Hello, you Indian over here? Lovely. And are you, were you born in India or are you like Australian, just? Fijian Indian. Fijian Indian, okay, lovely. And who are you here with tonight? Your cousin. Okay, nice. And why is that funny? What you... <laughs> Man, I hate to admit this, but like brown guys, we've got no game. It's true. Every time a girl screenshots some guy that's been creepy to her online. <laughs> it's always some brown guy. Like, oh, pretty girl, send bobs. <laughs> oh, beautiful woman, how much for marriage? <laughs> yeah, we can scam an entire family out of their life savings, but we can't ask a woman out on the internet. <laughs> And if you understand brown culture, you'll know why we're so bad with talking to women, okay? Because for thousands of years, we never had to talk to women. Our mothers did it for us. <laughs> for thousands of years, a brown guy turns 24, he's like, Mummy, I want a wife. She's like, okay, baby, I've got you. <laughs> Instead of intergenerational trauma, brown men have intergenerational traumatic riz. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, you know, we've achieved so much elsewhere. CEO of Google, brown guy. CEO of Microsoft, brown guy. Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, of all places. <laughs> it's a brown guy. You're telling me we can do all that, but we can't send a message on Instagram without getting blocked. <laughs> brown guys, stop engineering bridges, engineer some game, okay? <laughs> stop developing software, develop some curry riz. I reckon they should have diversity dating quotas. <laughs> yeah, this is the Ben Shapiro portion of the show. This is just, <laughs> well, hypothetically speaking, for the sake of the argument. <laughs> if, if the government is willing to intervene in the private market, there is no reason it should not be intervening in the dating market as well. <laughs> also, that's where the incels are, okay. Imagine that, every girl has to go on one date with at least one Asian or brown guy every year. 
Imagine the line outside 7-Eleven on New Year's Eve. <laughs> My man gets a date, you know? I grew up around a lot of different cultures. Uh, I grew up around a lot of Pacific Islanders. Are there any Pacific Islanders here? <laughs> nice. What, what, uh, what specific Pacific Islander are you? <laughs> Let's say. Samoan, nice. And are you here with anyone? Yeah, my boyfriend. Nice, is he Samoan as well? No, he's white. He's white? <laughs> How did the, did the family accept him? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, you gotta be this tall to them. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of people are intimidated by Pacific Islanders, but when you get to know them, they're actually the nicest people you'll ever meet. Like where I'm from, Six giant Tongans will come up to you, all six foot four, 120 kilos, eyebrow slits, tribal tattoos, and they'll just be like. <laughs> oh, you wanna come to church with us this Sunday, bro? <laughs> I've only got love and positivity in my heart. <laughs> Wouldn't even hurt a fly. It's either that or they're in a drill crew. There's no in between. <laughs> it's either that or it's like two in the head and the op was dead. Stomped his head, saw him bleed. Me and the boys got a 10 piece feed. <laughs> I also grew up around a lot of Lebanese people. We've got a few Lebanese people here, make some noise. Yes. I grew up around a lot of Lebanese people, so I feel like I've got a bit of leb in me. I spent a night in prison once, I had a big leb in me. I think we need an Australian Lebanese billionaire. Because all these other billionaires, they're boring. These tech nerds. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. They're like, mm, I want to fly my rocket to Mars. <laughs> if there was a lab guy, he'd be like, what's that, you're going Mars? <laughs> Fuck it, we're going Jupiter. <laughs> hey, boys, 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 get in the rocket, we're going Jupiter, all right? <laughs> Oi, we're going El Jana, then we're going Jupiter. Hey. <laughs> I'm gonna put American sweets on your anus. <laughs> oh, baby, I'm gonna take you to a spot in the solar system you've never been. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all from me, man. Thank you so much. That's been amazing. Thank you.